we got to talk a little bit about Raw last night, and I know you you probably had enough of it talking with Dave on Wrestling Observer Radio, which again is up for members of the site where uh, you you guys kind of laid it all out about Raw last night. But Bronson Reed debuts for the Miz. It looks like maybe we have the end of Dexter Loomis and the Miz uh, feuding with each other, and and maybe we are going to have uh, Miz and Johnny Gargano and Bronson Reed and. And Dexter Loomis, maybe that's how that's going to shake out. But the rest of the night was was dominated by the Bloodline, who took over Raw. And what did you think of the show? For anybody that may have not have had a chance to to listen to you and Dave last night, uh, I thought it actually at times moved pretty good. I thought the Bloodline stuff I thought was great, added some danger and some energy to the show because you just didn't know what was going to happen next with those guys running around there. But that ladder match uh that was the epitome of hitting a wall and on paper it probably made some sense to tell the story and give them 20 minutes especially when you're going to have a commercial break debut bronson uh i mean certainly believe that they expected a lot more out of that crowd that they ended up getting i thought the show was good um i think the best wrestling shows are ones that have that show long storyline and that theme that runs the little show. Obviously, you can't do that every week. That would be tiresome. But I think when they do do it, I think it tends to make for compelling television. This was all about promoting December 30th and John Cena making Kevin Owens dominant with the bloodline. And, you know, what's going to happen now that Kevin Owens did that? What's going to happen when he is John Cena, the greatest of all time, as a tag team partner? You better tune in December 30th to, to find out and see that that bloodline get its comeuppance. We had intergender last night in WWE yeah. for the first time since I believe it was 2017 when Becky Lynch defeated James Ellsworth. And they kind of worked that formula. Uh, actually, they worked it a lot better last night because Akira Tozawa can wrestle his ass off and Rhea Ripley can keep up with just about anybody. And I got to be honest, I got a huge kick out of that. And obviously, they worked it in a WWE style. There were no punches from Akira Tozawa to, to Rhea's face. It was a lot of dodging what she was doing, reversing what she was doing, and using wrestling moves. But I... I know that's a, a very polarizing subject in a perfect world for me. I, I don't know. I, I don't love it on a major level, to be honest, you know, and I, I know I'll get probably burned for that. But I like women's sports. I like women's wrestling. I like light heavyweights. Like, I like divisions on things. Maybe it's because I grew up a boxing fan. I don't know. Got used to all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I, I like having weight classes and all that sort of stuff because to me, as long as you're taking it seriously, it can work. WCW was a great example of that. Dean Malenko and Ultimo Guerrero and gentlemen like that getting over by just having great wrestling matches. You, you, yes, they were cruiserweights. Yes, they were smaller guys. But the story sold. The, the story of Jericho and Malenko was a fabulous one. It was a main event type of story. It just happened to be with guys a little further down on the card who didn't weigh as much. What did you think about WWE and the way that they did that? And can you see them maybe dribbling in a more in this type of style? If I'm Ali, Mustafa Ali, I'm thinking I'm next to lose and get beaten by Rhea Ripley because he's next on the uh, bottom of the booking pecking order. Uh, so, if I'm Mustafa Ali, I'm thinking it's probably just a matter of time before I'm in the ring losing to Rhea Ripley. Did you like how they did it, though? Is that something you could see them doing more of? I, I'm, you know, it's a show. You know, you see Black Widow in the Avengers beat up guys. I just, I just, it, sometimes it, you know, it just, I don't like the idea of, you know, if, if women, I don't mind, I, I'm not like a male ego, where it's like, oh, I'm offended because Rhea Ripley beat up a guy and that's unrealistic. I just don't like the idea of a guy's hitting a woman because it puts me in the mind of domestic violence. But her pinning him in a wrestling match, I don't know. 
So there's the music, folks. That was about all that happened on Raw last night, too. We got a pretty good main event, obviously, with uh, with, with Kevin Owens and uh, all that. But we'll I'll touch on that when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. We end the day. Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins defeated the Usos in the main event of the show last night, giving the Usos a little bit of comeuppance for all of the ruckus that they raised throughout the entire night. Also, there was a pretty darn good Bailey and Becky Lynch match as well, too. And once again, when Becky Lynch comes out, she's a star. And there were times where eh, the crowd wasn't uh, the best during this, but man, she and Bailey doing Johnny Saint and just having, I mean, I had a blast watching that match, and they are really good together, I think. Yeah, I thought that was great that the announcers actually mentioned that. So clearly, somebody must have clued them in, so that's that's great. That's great to talk about, you know, some of the history of wrestling and, you know, educate fans more than just the baseline stories and characters like they did in the past and i guess if you know fans want to get a little bit of a taste of some history they actually uploaded some old stuff to the network and look i understand the dynamics and the economics that people watch new stuff very few people watch the old stuff but putting up championship wrestlings from 1980 including the turn of larry zabisco on bruno san martino the debuts basically at the time of hulk hogan with freddie blassie up there i thought those were really kind of cool ads to have even though i doubt people other than us would really be digging that it's very historical if you want to see history go back and watch it. what part do you love about this job granny nothing when you when you irritate me <laughs> you make me mad i i guess seeing you seeing you guys when you week. needle me quit yeah. talking over me sorry if granny this person asks could leave only one thing in her will for brian <laughs> 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 what would it be? Rufus versus Roman Reigns, 2016. Rufus, Rufus on barricade. Rufus comes back, drops Reigns on the top rope. Rufus has a temper tantrum because only two count. Do you know that we put a clip of you on the internet last week? And these people on the internet are so dumb... That they thought that we hired an actor to play you. No. Mm-hmm. Ah, eh, forget okay. about it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.